served as vice president in the administration of Ulysses S. Grant. In 1876, the Nevada County Narrow Gauge Railroad began operating. It ran 21 miles from Colfax to the mining communities of Grass Valley and Nevada City and brought gold to Colfax from the northern deep rock mines of the Sierra Range. This little railroad operated for 66 years, closing down in 1942. During that time, it carried nearly a quarter of a billion dollars in gold over its rails. For many years, Colfax was also a shipping point for local fruit products. Many orchards are still located throughout the area. As our train departs Colfax, look off to the left, and you will see the remnants of the old packing sheds. Our elevation here at Colfax is 2,421 feet. Now, 87 Colfax will be the next station stop, if that's your destination. Now is the time to go to your personal belongings and make your way to the lower level of the coach car, sleeping car, that you're in to exit the train here at Colfax. This is going to be a brief stop, so please only come downstairs if you're exiting the train here. We're going to make two stops today. The first stop will be for the uh, first two cars in the train. The uh, coach uh, 510 coach will be the only coach door in the coach section that will open. That's the uh, first coach in the coach section. That'll be the first stop. The second stop will be for the very last car in the train, sleeping car passengers to exit here at Colfax. Once again, this is a brief stop. Only come downstairs if you're exiting the train. Make sure you have your personal items with you, and please watch your step to the platform here at Colfax. Jim and I would like to take this opportunity to tell you a little about the old Sacramento State Historic Park. This nine-acre complex includes the Museum of Railroad History, the reconstructed Central Pacific Railroad Passenger Station Freight Depot, the Eagle Theater, and the Big Four building that houses the museum's general offices, a world-class railroad research library, and the Huntington Hopkins & Company hardware store. This area is also the terminus of the Sacramento Southern Railroad, a steam-powered excursion train operated on weekends each spring and summer by museum volunteers. If you have internet access available at home, you can read all about the museum's many programs and activities, and even order merchandise from the museum store by searching for the California State Railroad Museum. Dome County Courthouse built in 1894. The courthouse was restored in 1984 and is still in use today. A few miles south of here on January 24, 1848, gold was discovered at Sutter's Mill in Coloma. A few months later on May 16, 1848, gold was discovered here in Auburn River and Creek. By 1849, miners flocked into this area and Auburn was established. Auburn became the Placer County seat in 1850. 
51. The Central Pacific Railroad reached Auburn in May 1865, two and a half years after construction had begun in Sacramento. The elevation here in Auburn is 1,234 feet, which is well above the winter fog level of the Sacramento Valley. Was deemed for John Bloomer, who owned the land which the trench was built. Construction began on February 24, 1864. This trench was necessary in order to maintain a level grade while laying tracks through this area. The trench is 800 feet long, 63 feet deep, and was cut through heavily compacted aggregate of round rocks also known as cemented conglomerate or nature's concrete. The trench wouldn't meet modern day design standards, but it has changed little since the railroad was built in the 1860s. The cut was carved out using hand equipment and black powder. It was the first major construction obstacle encountered by the builders of the Central Pacific Railroad. Ladies and gentlemen, Bloomer's Cut. <coughs> now off to the left, you'll see a narrow roadway and it's been paralleling our tracks. Well, that is part of America's first transcontinental highway better known as the Lincoln Highway. Back in 1912, the United States had 450,000 registered automobiles, but a relatively few miles of roads, mostly from cities and towns. Paved roads of any usually ended at the city limits. Enter Mr. Carl Fisher, the man who built the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, who conceived the idea of a coast-to-coast -coast highway. Construction of the Lincoln Highway began in 1914 after the automobile industry contributed more than $4 million to finance the ambitious program. Work was slow, and it wasn't until 1928 that the highway was considered finished, although at the time it was not paved over its entire length. The road ran from New York City to San Francisco, a distance of 3,385 miles. It was referred to as the Main Street of the United States.